few days later, they said, Fripp, Casey, your crew next, you're on the next operation. One similar to Wing Commander Day. Thank you very much, sir. What's the uh, intelligence? Well, you know, there's nothing there, nothing to be worried about. Uh, just take your photographs. Well, what happened to Wing Commander Day? Oh, we don't know about that yet. So we took off, we took off to fly to Metz, which was on the border of uh, France and Germany, to uh, uh, refuel and wait for an escort of hurricane aircraft, which are supposed to be there. When we got there, there were no hurricanes to be found. So we had to take off by ourselves. So we took off, flew over the Maginot Line, over the Siegfried Line, and into the middle of Germany. We were operationally committed to take the photograph of the, of the uh, railway line from uh, the middle of Germany to Hamburg to find out what the movement of traffic was, the movement of troops and armour. We got to the middle of Germany, we took our photographs and lo and behold, just after we took them at 10,000 feet, uh, 10, feet, we uh, found that there was a spitfire as the uh, air gunner said, you better get a move on, sir. He's coming up fast. So um, a Messerschmitt, uncle. A Messers a yeah. Messerschmitt 109. Yeah. And before he could get the words out of his mouth, the first tracer bullets and uh, cannon shell came through the aircraft. He knocked him off his head pedestal and knocked the gun off his mounting, and came through and went through the front of the aircraft more or less. But it was like a like a tin of rusty nails being shaken up very, very, very rapidly. And uh, so the pilot said, right, this is all happening in seconds, you know. And the pilot said, right, low level. So they put his nose right down. He tried to find some cloud cover, but there was none to be seen because we might have evaded him through the clouds. Uh, but uh, the clouds are so thin that he could see us all the time. So uh, we were down, we went down to uh, six, six feet. And lo and behold, for the next quarter of an hour, we are hedge hopping. And every time we came up to go over a hedge, we got a, a hail of bullets through us. And then towards the end, the uh, uh, canvas engine covers, which were in the bomb well, were smoldering and there's smoke coming out. Uh, then we hit a tree and that put the port engine out and so we were flying along on one engine and smoke coming out of the uh, bomb well so the pilot said well we can't remain we can't retain height anyway so six from six feet to naught feet was nothing and then 100 miles an hour to no miles an hour and <laughs> finished up in a crash so we landed in the middle of a potato field um, we must have dug up a few potatoes <coughs> on the way, but uh, mm. we were only there for about 10 minutes and getting over the shock. Because when, you, when, when you're in that situation, you're shocked. Mm. Uh, you don't know what to do. You, you, you can't think. Mm. Uh, and for about five minutes, we were over there like that. And then the fighter pilot who shot us down came over and waved to us. And so we gave him two fingers. And he thought we were waving to him, but we weren't. And uh, then... Two minutes later, the Luftwaffe came in along in their cars and picked us up. For you, the war is over. And that was that. Is that what they said? That was it. And they said it in English? They said it in English, yes. It, it's amazing the number of, number of people that can speak English in Germany. Mm. And, you know, they probably taught this one phrase anyway during a war. Yeah. 